everyone. So here we are in the second piece of the integumentary system lecture. We've already talked about the layers of the epidermis, and now we're going to talk about the cells of the epidermis. There are five of them that we're going to go through. We've actually already talked about that first one, the stem cells. And the stem cells, those are the ones that are going to undergo apop sorry, not apoptosis, undergo mitosis in order to make more cells. And their job is to make a whole bunch of new cells to help going to regenerate the tissue. So where, which layer were they going to be found in? Stratum basale, at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to, that's those stem cells. So the cells that we're going to talk about now are the keratinocytes, the melanocytes, the tactile cells, and then the dendritic cells. Okay, so the, remember, let's just remind ourselves that the ending site means cell, and so the keratinocytes, those are the cells that are gonna be filled with keratin. So as the cells get pushed further and further up, up they're gonna get more and more keratin. That's that protein that helps with waterproofing. And so by the time they get to the, the very top, they're going to be just basically just sacks of keratin and dead cells at the top, and that provides a lot of good protection. So most of the cells of the epidermis are going to do that, and so most of the cells are the keratinocytes. So I sort of just think of the keratinocytes as the cell of the skin, right? So most of the cells are doing that. Okay, moving on to the melanocytes. The melanocytes are called that because they produce a particular type of pigment, which is called melanin. And melanin, what it does is um, it protects the cells from UV light. And UV light is very damaging to cells. It can damage DNA, which can lead to things like cancer. And so the melanocytes are those specialized cells that produce the melanin, and then they actually pass off that melanin to the surrounding cells because dark colors reflect the light instead of, of you know instead of you know damaging the DNA it just sort of acts like a little umbrella to protect the cells. So that leads us into a discussion of skin color and I wanted to go ahead and pause real quick to just acknowledge that this can be a, a sensitive topic especially in the current climate. So uh, I, let's acknowledge it, but then let's also remember that knowledge leads to understanding, and understanding leads to acceptance and love. So we're going to steam ahead in the name of understanding. Okay, so when you look at skin color, skin color is a kind of a mixture of various different factors. You have pigments such as melanin, you also have another one called keratin. And then you also have things like blood supply, blood supply because blood is kind of a reddish color so that gives some of the coloring, especially if you don't have as much pigment to kind of cover it up. But what we're going to focus on is melanin because we are looking at melanocytes. So why would, a pop, why would you have more melanin and why would you have less melanin? And let's go ahead and take a minute to look at my cute babies. Oh, so cutie. Anyway, sorry, mother gloating. Okay, so why would you have more melanin? Let's do that one first. And it all has to do, it boils down to the environment of your ancestors, right? And so if you look at it and if you look at the variation of skin color in the, in the world, you'll notice that the darkest, the darkest native populations kind of hover right around the equator. And the reason for that is because the equator receives the most amount of UV light. And as you go towards the poles of the earth, you're gonna have less and less UV light. And so remember that the melanin is going to protect the cells from damage for the DNA, and that could lead, ooh, protect it from cancer, especially skin cancer. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that the, um, the UV light also has the, um, also has the potential to degrade folic acid. And folic acid is an essential nutrient that is really important to prevent birth defects. And so if you're not getting the folic acid, your rates of birth defects would increase, right? So this is a strong pressure to, to have a lot of melanin in those areas with a lot of UV light, okay? So that's a pretty strong advantage. 
And so the question remains though is, well, why would you have less melanin towards the poles, right? So you would think, well, yeah, we, you know, melanin's great. It protects us from skin cancer and protects us from birth defects. Why would we lose the melanin towards the poles? And the, ha that ha and the answer to that is that it's gonna balance another problem. And that other problem is that um, we need some UV light. That UV light is really important because our skin uses the UV light to make vitamin D. Right, so we can get vitamin D in our diets. You can get it from dairy products and especially fish, which explains why you also have some dark, you know, darker um, Native Alaskan people, Eskimo people. But in general, we also need the UV light from the sun so that we can produce enough vitamin D. And so as you're going towards those pools, you need to make sure that you get enough UV light. So really there's a balance between the two needs. You need, you need just enough UV light to make vitamin D, but not so much UV light that you're going to end up getting skin cancer, right? So some protection from the UV light as well. So it really is kind of balance between the two. And that's where you get this big broad spectrum of skin variation in the earth. Okay, so that UV, oh, I forgot to mention that the vitamin D is important because it helps with um, depositing the calcium into the bone matrix. And if you don't have that calcium, that could lead to, uh, that you don't have improperly growing bones, you won't have um, strong bones. And so for example, rickets, which is caused by a lack of vitamin D, that can lead to soft, spongy bones. They won't be hard enough to support the weight of the gravity, okay? So balance between the two. So the other thing I wanted to point out is that we live in a global world and we're, you know, traveling all over the place. We don't kind of stay where our native ancestors used to be. So you really want to keep that in mind when you go to different locations. So for example, for me, you know, growing up on an island in Guam, I was just burnt all the time. So you really want to sort of make accommodations for, for being in an environment that's not well suited to your physiology, to your anatomy. So wear sunscreen if you are a darker complex, com complexion and you're moving to like, I don't know, London or someplace where there's not a lot of Greenland, you really want to, again, accommodate for that by taking vitamin D supplements, okay? Or, you know, making sure you get enough sun if there's any. And so just sort of balance out your environment. Okay, so that's enough on that. I um, want to mention a couple of variations. Um, we also have some uh, disorders that can lead to variations in skin color. So for example, vitiligo here, what that is, it's an, actually an autoimmune disorder that makes it so that the immune system is attacking the melanocytes. And if the melanocytes are being destroyed, you can't make the melanin. And so you get these patchy areas because you're only gonna have that immune response in certain areas and you're gonna, so you have areas where you have normal melanocytes making melanin and then you have areas where you're not going to be producing uh, either less melanin or sometimes no melanin at all in those locations, okay? So um, albinism, albinism is a genetic disorder or I guess a genetic variation, be careful with that that can lead to you not producing any melanin at all. Okay, so again, lots of different things can affect skin color. On to tactile cells. So tactile, what does it mean to be tactile? Okay, so if you, somebody talks about a tactile activity, there's something that you physically can touch, right? So a tactile cell is a cell that is found in the stratum basale, so the lowest layer. And what it is, is an it's like a modified cell that a synapses or connects to free nerve endings, which are sensory neurons that are going to take that sensory information all the way to the brain. So it's for sensation. So we'll talk more about sensation, general sensation, when we get to the sensory neuro, to the 
general senses. Okay, so for now, tactile touch. Dendrites, so dendritic cells, are cells that wander around in the skin, and they are, they are immune cells, but they're specifically phagocytic immune cells. And what it means to be a phagocyte is that it engulfs things. So phagocytosis is just a fancy term for it eats other things. So this immune cell is going to wander around, and anytime it comes in contact with foreign material or things, pathogens mostly, so bacteria, or in this case, a yeast cell, it's going to form these little pseudopods that surround the thing and bring it in, and then it'll digest it and use it, you know, kind of re recycle the components, right? So it's going to be part of the immune system protecting you from foreign pathogens. Okay, so what I want you to do right now is go ahead and pause, and I want you to list all five of the cells, and then, sorry, I listed once, all the four remaining cells, and then list the general function for each. Okay, welcome back. So we have the stem cells. The stem cells, they make more cells so that you can repair and replenish, re renew your, set, your skin. Then we have the keratinocytes, keratinocytes, those are just most of the cells. They make up this kind of the cellular, the st structure of the cell, of the skin. Melanocytes, those provide UV protection by creating melanin, like as, just as it sounds like. Tactile cells do tactile touch sensation. And the dendritic cells, those are the ones that go around and eat things, and that's involved in immunity. Okay, that's enough for now. See you later.